as I said, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, so I was coming over here, I was thinking about something my other students, he's staying hydrated too, but he's not doing it very well. You, do you have a drinking problem? No. You ever, you know, you ever see this movie, uh, Airplane, where the guy has a drinking problem? Every time he drinks, it like, <laughs> puts it over his shoulder. <laughs> the drink ever. That's it. Okay. So anyway, I was talking to my, my, my other students asked me where I went, I gave a lecture yesterday to a group of students and they were, was, they were non-Muslim students. And so they're asking me about, you know, uh, inheritance in Islam and Muslim families. Like, so how does, you know, how does like inheritance work? And I said, well, um, in Islamic, in Islamic law, this, these laws are in the, in the Quran, actually. And, well, some of them are in the Quran. So, for example, the Prophet, salam, tells us that you can do with up to one-third of your state, estate, like everything you own, you can give it to anybody you want. Except uh, those people who already are going to inherit from you. Unless all those people agree. But otherwise, like for example, let's say I want to give a third of my estate to Dar al-Hijra. I can do that. No one can stop me. None of my kids or wife or parents or brothers or sisters can stop me, right? Now, otherwise, the rest of my wealth is going to get divided up according to the shares that are stated in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet, right? So my wife is going to get, uh, I think, a fourth of my, a fourth or an eighth, an eighth. My wife is going to get an eighth of my estate. My, and then the rest is going to get divided between my two sons. And it doesn't matter. Like, let's say one of them is a jerk and he, you know, I don't like his life choices and he has bad hair, you know, he has like bad haircuts all the time, for example. And I just don't approve of his, you know, I don't approve of, I don't approve of his lifestyle. There's nothing I can do. Right, this guy, he's gonna inherit half. So in, I was thinking to myself, this is a real blessing. Because uh, a lot of times, especially when, I see this, I see this a lot with like my, my relatives, my non-Muslim relatives. People are always trying to be nice to their relatives that they think they're gonna inherit something from. Because they want that person to put them in their will. But if you're in, uh, in Islam, it doesn't matter. If, you, you know, if you're nice to somebody, you're nice to someone because you want to be nice to them. Because there's no, <laughs> it's not going to do you any benefit, right, to, uh, to be nice to your, your uncle or not, right? Um, now, if the person wants, like let's say if I want, I can give part of that one third to one of the people who is going to inherit already. But all the other inheritors have to agree. This is from the hadith of the Prophet, La wasiyata li warath illa insha al waratha. Right? So you can't give, I can give up to a third of my wealth to like Dar al Hijra, but I can't give any to, let's say, I talked about my wife and my two sons, unless my wife and my two sons all agree that, okay, let's give one to more to this son because, you know, he needs more help or he has a business he wants to start or something like that. So anyway, I was uh, telling my students about this. And they were, you know, uh, so in the Quran, it says that the daughter gets half the share of the son. And I, of course the students were like, why is that? It's not fair. And I said, well, you know, the Quran doesn't say why, but scholars have usually assumed that it's because you know, men have more responsibilities. A Muslim man has to pay mahar when he gets married. And then a Muslim man is responsible for his female relatives. So I'm responsible for my sisters. I'm responsible for uh, my mom, right? I'm responsible, like, I'm responsible for all these, uh, all the females who are related to me if they aren't able to care for themselves or if they don't have someone to care for them. Um, but, you know, in any case, I thought it's interesting because the, what these students were thinking was, they said, this is, you know, this is a, uh, an example of, you know, in Islam, this means that, you know, Islam doesn't really think of 
women as having the same value as men. And so I thought about that. And I said, well, I don't think that's true because, for example, in the same verses in the Quran, who knows about how much, if I have parents, my parents are dead, but let's say I had parents. How much would each of them inherit from me if I died? Anybody know? Come on, guys, use your phones for something useful. Who said that? You? Well, actually, that's not, that's wrong, but it's not a bad guess. But you know, look, look, mashallah, this guy's brain is working. You know, there's like nerves or nerves or electric, electrical impulses are being sent between and along synapses. Activity is happening. One fifth. One fourth. Are you guys just guessing? Uh, so, you guys are hysterical. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm thinking about my kids being your age, and I'm like, I'm full of dread. But also, I'm optimistic because I'm going to abuse them mercilessly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let them have it whenever they make bad hairstyle choices. So my point is, the, uh, how much is it? You said a, a fifth, you said a fourth. Subri. What? Yeah, it's one, well, it depends on who else is alive, but one sixth each. So I have a question. If my father and my mother both get one sixth, what does that mean about? Is, how does how does the Quran think about the value of men and women? Same. In this case, it's the same. Then I was I thought about this hadith in Sunan of Nasa'i and Sunan of Tirmidhi, where the Prophet, a man comes to the Prophet and asks him, Alayhi he wants to give gifts to his children. His children. He's alive, his children are alive, right? He wants to give them a gift. And he asks the prophet, how much should I give to each one? And the prophet says, Be just between them. What does that mean? Well, that's an interesting question. What does it mean to be just? Here's a question. So let's say, what's, uh, what's your name? Uh, phone play guy. Adam. Adam. So Adam, and then what's your name? Ahmed. Ahmed what's your name? Tasneem? Yeah. Oh, it's a nice name. Okay. And Miriam. So let's say I have four, I have a pie. How am I going to be just in dividing, in dividing this pie between these people? So like the, it seems like the default is just one quarter each, right? Okay, but now let's imagine that, um, you know, uh, it's been a long weekend. You guys have been doing Darl Hijra stuff, activities. And uh, Adam and Tasneem, they were working the whole time. They were making the coffee. They were making the tea. They were, you know, organized everything. And what was your name again? Ahmed and Miriam, they're basically sitting around playing on their phones for two days. So now let's say, who, who, I, now I have this pie. How do I divide it justly? They've been working hard. They're both, they're all, you guys are all four of you hungry, but Adam and Mir Tasneem, they've been really working hard for co the common good. Ahmed and Miriam, they were basically sitting around. How, what is the just way to divide my pie? What happened? You still think equally? I mean, what, maybe, maybe you're right, right? Maybe that's correct. But probably you could also maybe make an argument that, like, you know, uh, Adam and Tasneem should get more. I mean, they spent more calories, didn't they? Correct? So does everyone know the difference between, you probably know this because you probably follow, like, woke social media or something like that, between equality and equity? 
Who knows the who knows the difference between this? You guys, why don't you stop talking to each other and listen to me and answer my questions? Demonstrate your intelligence, not your ability to whisper probably unimportant things to your friends. What's the difference between equality and equity? Yes, what's your name? Yusuf. I'm blown away, people. Yusuf, you restored my hope in the youth of today. <laughs> nice. Thank you very much. Good job. I was, I was going to go home. I was going to start crying. I was going to write some kind of insulting social media post. But now Yusuf has restored my faith. So equality is when things are divided equally. Equity is when you... As the Prophet says, لِكُلِّ ذِي حَقٍ حَقَّهُ Everybody who has a haq gets their haq. Everybody who has a right gets their right. Everybody gets what? Everyone ever heard, he got his just desserts? You ever heard that phrase? Just desserts. You never, never heard this phrase? Not Adam, not the guy, who's, who's this? Abdullah, you've never heard, he, he's got your just desserts? You, you've heard this? Thank you, Abdullah. My faith is also bolstered. Sabri, you've heard it? You got his just desserts? Sabri, you've been in Tunisia too long, man. You need to go, and go, go like on the streets of the US and listen to what people are saying. So that just desserts, that actually has nothing to do with desserts. What does dessert mean? This is a question, now you didn't think you're gonna lose. What, is it, what does dessert mean, yes? What's your name? Fahmi. Fahmi, mashallah. Fahmi, dessert is the stuff you get at the end of the meal, which you really want. It's from a French word to deserve. You, the idea is like, oh, you've earned this. Here's your desserts, right? So dessert comes, actually, when you say just dessert, it means what you deserve. When you say, oh, he got his just desserts, this is a saying, it doesn't mean he got like a pie or something or a cake. It means he got what he, he got what was coming to him. Good job, Fahmi. So the with our pie example, we had like one example is, you know, to think about one way of divide, being just is to be divide things equally. One way is to divide things equitably. Is one better than the other? Is one more just than the other? I don't know. I mean, it kind of depends, right? I mean, you sort of, it kind of depends on the context. Like, let's, yes. I feel like in certain scenarios, uh, equality has to be, like, more important than, like, if it comes to the law, everyone's going to treat the same. But when it comes to, like, how hard someone works, that should be equity. Okay, yeah. So I have a question. Now, let's say that, um, let's say that uh, there's two teenagers. One of them is like the best, this person is gonna be a professional football player. You know, this guy, I'm just gonna use guys, because I don't know about girls' sports. You know, and I guess they don't get paid that much. So it's not going to help my example. But let's, the, this one guy, one guy's gonna, this guy's going to be a professional football player. Another guy is going to be a professional thumb twiddler. This, dude, this guy is, he's not going to make any, you know, he's got no future in professional sports. Maybe he's got no future in anything. Not very impressive. Now let's say that um, uh, some crazy, some, uh, some guy uh, is a jerk and he goes around attacking Muslim people and he hits one guy in the arm with the baseball bat and the other guy in the arm with the baseball bat. How much should they get paid? Like how much should they get as, a da as their damages from the court when this guy is having is, hmm? Or from insurance. Yes, put it that way. Do you think they should get equal amount? So the guy who's gonna make millions and millions of dollars using his passing arm should get the same amount of money as the guy who's 
not going to, his, you know, wasn't really going to make any money. Interesting. That's not what the American law says. Um, although, interestingly, okay, so that's an interesting, that's I'm surprised that was your answer. Does everyone, everyone agree with that? I'm curious. I'm not angry or anything. I'm just curious. She said there should be equal amount. No. What's your name? Haytham. So what do you think? I think that the person that was supposed to, when they got their future ruined, you get paid more because they had more at risk. Yeah, they, they lost, in fact, they lost more, right? Uh, their arm was more valuable, basically. Their arm was more valuable, right? So Tom Brady's arm is not like my arm. Now, it doesn't mean my arm is worthless, but it just means that Tom Brady's arm is, a, is, gonna, is a lot, worth a lot more. Uh, but it's, you know, so it's interesting. Like, I, that's not actually this, this, I thought this example would be clear, but Marion disagreed with me, so it's not clear. You said they were both attacked, the attacker had to risk on people. Yeah. That's interesting. You know, that's an interesting question. So let's say, uh, let's think of another example. Um, equity versus equality. It's like a, a raffle, right? Everybody should get one raffle ticket, right? So everybody gets like the same number of raffle tickets. Everybody has the same chance to win. There it seems like equality is a good thing, what's just. But when we think about, um, uh, let's say a company, and there's a couple people who are in a company, and they, one person's doing all the work, or let's say 90% of the work, and one, the other people are all doing 10% of the work. You think it's just that the person who's doing 90% of the work maybe gets more money? Or not? Hmm? Depends on what? You mean so they do other things? Yeah. What if they fought, like, if they, for example, in the business? All other things are equal. All other things are equal. No, it's a good, uh, what's your name? Omar. Omar's making a good point. There's maybe, maybe more things at play, right? Maybe one person's doing 90% of the work, but the other person's doing 10% of the work, but they're bringing 90% of the, the assets. They provide the computers and the chairs and the building and everything. Good point. But let's say all things being equal, maybe the person who's doing, let's say just, he's bringing 90% of everything, maybe he should get more of like, more of the earnings of the company or of the, if it becomes successful, he'll take, get more of the earning, or of the, of the value. Okay, so it's interesting that in the case of the, there's another hadith, this one is narrated by Ibn Abbas, where, Ibn Abbas remembers the prophet saying, not be just between the children, be equal between them. That's interesting. So what he remembers is the prophet said, be equal between them. So it seems like if you, if you have one hadith that says be just between them, and there could be different ways of being just, so you don't know which one to... to to take, and you have another re companion remembering the hadith, and it's give equally between them. What do you think you should do with these two pieces of evidence? Let's say I, let's say I tell you, uh, guys, go get me a, a beverage. And then someone else says, no, he said, go get me a hot beverage. What should you do with these two pieces of information? I mean, the one that's with more detail is actually going to, like, modify the other one. You're like, oh, this one's unclear. This one's clear. So we're going to take the clear in, uh, piece of evidence, and it's going to, like, mo modify the other one. It's going to specify it, right? So it's interesting. In this case, it seems like what the Prophet, alayhi salam, is saying is, like, actually... If you have children, you're giving them gifts, you should be, give equally between them. 
what does that say about the, like, the uh, valuing of boys and girls, or males and females, in the, in the, in the, in the prophet's view? Yeah, they're equal, right? And then, it's an interesting case because Muslim scholars historically had no problem. So let, let's say that I have two sons and a daughter. And I want to make sure the daughter like gets, you know, maybe, um, you know, she wants to do a business or something or... She wants to go live separately from another country or something. So I want to make sure she gets enough money for in my inheritance. And I go for my estate. I go and I ask my sons, I say, okay, listen, guys, do you agree that I'm going to give some of this one third to your sister and then she's going to get the same as you? And they say, yes. Uh, Muslim scholars had no problem like writing the documents for this and, and, formula, and helping families work this stuff out. So the, the bottom line is they didn't have any problem. Like there was no indication that Muslim scholars ever thought that these Quranic verses meant that um, boys were somehow more valuable than girls. And we know from this, this hadith I told you about the prophet answering the question about giving uh, gifts to a person, you know, a person giving gifts to their children when they're alive. There's no evidence that the prophet thought that boys should get more than girls. In fact, it seems like he's saying give equally to your children. So you have like a system that, you know, as a, like a default, right, or a presumption gives more to your son than to your daughter because the son's probably going to have more responsibilities. But if you don't want to do that, if you, if you, or if the, the son is going to have less responsibilities, maybe the son's kind of an idiot, the daughter's really intelligent, then there's no problem with uh, giving more to the daughter. Okay. So I thought that was, an, that was an interesting answer to the student's question because their assumption about what the Quran meant, I don't think is accurate, right? It's not accurate when you look at that Quranic verse in the context of the teachings of the Prophet, in the context of how Muslim scholars understood these things. Then the, the um, students were asking me about marriage. In three of the four Sunni schools of law, and the main op the opinion of the Hanafi school of law, so almost all Muslim scholars, if a daughter wants to get married, does she need the permission of her, let's say, male guardian, like her father or her father's dad, like her uncle or brother or someone? Does she need that? Yeah. Okay. That's, the person's called the, the wali, the guardian. This, of course, did not make these students happy. They said, this is not fair. I was thinking about this. And I'll be honest. I've, you know, when you're, I'm not an imam, so I don't get a lot of marriage complaints. Like, but I do get some. Like, you know, imams, they get lots of people coming to them with marriage problems. I get some people coming to me with marriage problems. Alhamdulillah, it's gotten less over the last couple of years. Is it time to stop? Okay. Um, but I, I keep seeing these instances where a Muslim woman gets married to a guy who everybody knew was bad news. Like some, oh, actually, a, 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 a woman I know very well. When she was going to get married to this guy, I met this guy. I was like, this guy is terrible. There's no way she should get married to this guy. Sure enough, the guy was terrible. Now they're getting divorced. Total misery. People, when you're in love, you don't, uh, you're not thinking about practical things. You, you need someone who's going to be there to say, you know what, I think this is right or this is good for you or this is bad for you. But my students, I, I, I made this case to my students, but they said, Professor Brown, you know what, that's not, that's not how this is going to happen. What's going to happen is, what if the dad is like oppressive? He wants to control his daughter, and he doesn't let her marry some wonderful guy who everybody thinks is amazing, and is a great Muslim, and so talented, but your dad just doesn't like him. And I said, well, 
it's very uh, obvious what to do in this situation. And you see this in all the Muslim schools of law. What happens if your dad doesn't let you marry this wonderful guy that no one could ob object to? Yes. Yeah, you just go to another way. Or you go to a, the judge. And, this, and then the judge will just say, this guy, your dad, is being unreasonable, and I'm going to supersede him as the wali. Right? What is uh, with this, uh, what's your name again? Yeah, were you like sneezing or something? Are you okay? Okay, if you have allergies, do you need an EpiPen or something? Okay, good. I just want to make sure that you're all right. Herbalite nutrition. Herbalite nutrition. Herbal life nutrition. Yeah. yeah, it's written on your shirt. I'm just wondering, maybe you're like, you know, you got swag from them or something. Okay. Huh? It's good to get free stuff in some of the time. Okay, so uh, what was I talking about? Marriage. Marriage, exactly. So anyway, I was thinking, to my, I said to my students, like, this is, this is not, uh, the things that you're thinking this means are not entailed by what the Quran and the Prophet Sunnah and the Muslim tradition actually teaches, right? So all these things that they, they thought when they, you know, when they heard about these rules, these Quranic verses, I don't think we're actually entailed by what these verses or what these rules meant. Um, I don't want to, uh, like, talk for too long and not give you a chance to ask questions. Do any of you have any questions about these specific issues, about, like, inheritance and marriage laws and things like that and issues of equality and... Bias, yeah. What's your, uh, Miriam? Uh, what about like bad relationships with parents? So, I think these some of these guys are kind of lost causes. I'm going to look over here. I don't actually don't know why I was looking at these guys. I think they were just getting too entertained by that. Um, the so. Do you mean like when you're young or when you're older? Yeah, this is very common. I would say that, you know, we, we, we know from the Quran, right, the, the importance of, you, from Surah Al-Luqman, I mean, you have to be good to your parents. Unless your parents, even if your parents ask you, like they like, want you to worship another god or they want you to stop him, but they want you to do something wrong. You still have to be kind to them, but you, just, you don't obey them, but you're still kind and respectful to them. This is very important. And we know from the, the son of the Prophet, like the duty especially to be kind to one's mother. And I know that a lot of times, uh, especially with uh, women, they could, obviously sometimes people have great relationships, but sometimes there can be like a lot of tension with, between mothers and daughters as like people get older, you know. Um, and it's really important that you are always good to your parents. Now, that doesn't mean you have to listen to what they say, especially if what they, if they, if, if it, what they want you to do is wrong. But, um, I mean, my, my advice, and I, I think this is based very well in the like, Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet, is it's very important to be, to be good to you. You'll, you'll, when your parents... Uh, I'm not just saying even like you, but when one's parents die, you never can go back and fix these things. And it's, uh, you'll regret, you'll regret the bad feelings and the fights and we'll see, they'll seem silly. So it depends, like sometimes, you know, if people are really being like harmful and nasty and mean, uh, you might have to be like distant, you know, have some distance from them. 
but it's always really important to be respectful. Even if the, even if the person spits it back in your faith, face, even if they're just, they say nasty stuff to you to always be kind to your parents. Like it doesn't mean you have to do what they say, especially when you're older. It doesn't mean you have to listen to everything they say, but like you always have to be respectful and always have to be kind. Um, and if you let, if, if you let yourself kind of get angry at them in the way you think they deserve and sort of treat them in the way you think they've earned to be tr- being treated, you'll regret this. And, you won't, you, and when they're gone, you won't have a chance to fix it. When people... Uh, what do you guys... I don't understand how things can be so funny. Like, uh, I mean, I remember being your age, but I don't, life wasn't that funny. Okay, so the... I mean, I think that... Allahumma says to Muhammad. Um, okay, I think I answered it. Yeah, go ahead. Also, on the thing on like marriage, this is something I, I didn't realize when I was younger, and I learned it as you get, you get older. I wish someone had, t- had given me this advice, which is it's really important that your, uh, like your spouse get, gets along with your family. It's really important. Um, and I didn't, I, I didn't ever really think about that. I got lucky, alhamdulillah. My in-laws are very nice. But if being married is tough, it's like hard enough to be married. But if you're married and then your, um, your, fa- your in-laws like, don't like you, it can be really, make life really, really unpleasant. So a lot of these rules that I, I used to think when I was younger, I thought about them as kind of like old-fashioned or limiting. I realized later on these were... These are just really good advice, <laughs> really good advice. Like, and, you know, there's no, um, when you're, especially when you're, when you're young and you're meeting people, like you, you always think like, this is the only person for me. And if, if I don't get married to them, I'm never going to meet anybody miserable my whole life. Ah, things like that. But that's not true. There's lots of people in the world. And you'll meet someone else that are probably just as good, if not better. And so... You know, I think that's something that it's hard for young people to hear, but it's useful and it's true. Other questions? What's your name? Hashim. Hashim, you've been very well behaved. Do you have any questions? What about you, Yusuf? Oh, you who restored my faith in the young? Yes. In your past life, like in a previous life, like a reincarnation, or as in, as in like, in the past? Recently, recently, recently. Yeah. I, w- I say it's, it's always good to forgive people, really. And uh, because you don't want to, um, anger at people is like a, it's like a weight. You carry it around, it starts to eat at you and burden you. And especially as you get older, like there's just not, uh, it's hard to, it, it becomes a real burden, you know? And if you, if you don't get in the habit of forgiving people, you know, uh, there's a you know, hadith of the prophet, man la yarham la yarham. You know, the person who doesn't have mercy, they're not going to be, people aren't going to deal with them mercifully. Or, you know, that, that as the prophet said, you know, be merciful in this world, and the, the God in the heaven will be merciful with you. So you, 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 know, like you have to get in the habit of being able to forgive people. It's hard when, when you're angry. Uh, but especially like as time goes by, it'll be easier to forgive them. So maybe like when something happened recently, it's hard to forgive. But as time goes by, like make, if you start feeling like a little more relaxed about the thing, like work, act on that you know, kind of build on that and, and make a decision to forgive the person. Now, that doesn't mean you're stupid, right? So if, you, if someone is, you know, if someone took your car and trashed it and you're angry at them and then they took your other car and they trashed it and you're angry at them, right? And then they, you know, you lend them your, what do kids have that they care about? What is that thing? 
Is that some kind of video game that's like a, like a fidget spinner? It's a fidget? How does it work? Oh, one of those little things that pops. Yeah. yeah. So let's say you like these and you keep lending them to your friend and then he keeps losing them, right? Like, don't lend them your car next time. Don't lend them your fidget spinner, right? So it doesn't mean that you, you don't uh, recognize that people can have bad habits, that people can be troubled, that maybe you don't want them around. Like, there's some people, and you'll see, that they're just, they like attract bad stuff. They're just always causing drama. They're always having problems. And after a while, if you have a choice, you might not want to have like, a, you know, you might not want to be always with this person. You might want to have some distance. So forgiving someone doesn't mean you have to give them another chance to, to, to hurt you. But it just means you forgive them for that thing and you don't carry that anger around. And it, it's also very important to have good manners. Very important. And I... We, you, I've learned the value of adab. You learn the ad, value of adab, especially when people are, in a, are disagreeing a lot. It's very important to have good adab. A lot of the problems of like politics in our country today is really is just about bad manners. Like people can't be polite to each other. They can't be respectful. You don't have to be. A, you can really disagree with someone. You can really think they're wrong about something, but you always just have to be respectful to them. Uh, this is a very important habit to be in, right? Um, and that's why, like, a lot of the rules we, have, we learn as Muslims, for example, if you have a guest, you always honor your guest. You always offer them food. You always offer them drinks, right? You always respect them. It doesn't matter. They could be a jerk. They could be someone you hate. They could be someone you know did something bad. But... It doesn't matter. You always honor your guests. That's just a rule you follow. It's not about whether you like the person. It's not whether about you. Whether, if we all went around treating each other how we really, according to how we really felt about one another or according to whether, whether we liked their political views or not, our society would just fray. We wouldn't be able to deal with one another. It's very important to have, like, you know, so forgiveness, good manners are important habits to develop. These are habits you develop. They're not things that just are automatically part of your personality. And when you're young, it's a good time to start these habits. Hi. Fahmi, how's it going? He's just, uh, no, he's fine. Uh, Other questions? <laughs> Come on, guys. Ladies? Tasneem, nothing? Yes, what's your name? Selma. Selma. Like non-Muslim people? Yeah, like what's, like, have your students ever asked you about uh, surrounding the Prophet Muslim? What's kind of the biggest misconception? <coughs> misconception. I mean, I think, to, to be, I mean, I think probably, it depends, like, how uh, intelligent they are, you know? So let's take someone who's not just kind of bigoted and just, doesn't like stuff because they're not used to it or something, right? I think it's, uh, it's not necessarily something about the Prophet of Islam. It's more that there's certain things that they're very sure of and things that don't, if someone doesn't affirm those things, they just don't really find them to be appealing, right? Uh, so, you know, certain things about... Um, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to say too much, but like certain things about like gender or sexuality, things like that. Like some people today, they just will not believe that anybody who doesn't think these things can be, you know, morally in the right at all, let alone be worthy of following. Huh? Polygamy, I think, is not so much a big deal anymore. You know, when I was younger, when I, when I was like in college or in graduate school, 
this was a big deal. You know, polygamy was always being debated. I haven't talked about polygamy for like seven years. Okay. I haven't, you know, I haven't talked about this for years. It's just, once you, let's just put it this way. Once you've at least notionally as a society decided that other kind of relationships are okay and it, it's all about just consenting adults and stuff, who's going to object? So that's not, that's almost like, now it's about other things, like LGBT stuff. I think that's actually one of the biggest issues. Guys, it's, ladies, it's been a pleasure. Guys, Yusuf, the other guys who did well, I'm impressed. How old are you guys? Ten. Oh. Teenagers.